Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today I want to talk about guitarist Wes Montgomery. Wes was a jazz guitarist that lived from 1923 to 1968. He died at only 45 years of age. But he was unquestionably the most influential jazz guitarist, or some might say guitarist in general of all time. Wes influenced all my favorite guitarists, from Joe Pass to George Benson to Pat Martino to Pat Metheny to John Schofield. He, in, he influenced Jimi Hendrix, he influenced Joe Satriani, Eric Johnson. Virtually every guitarist I can think of that I respect, Wes is a major, if not the biggest, influence of. And why is it that Wes was so influential? Well, let's take a look at him playing. You can tune this is up. Wes. This, this one. Playing with Tim <laughs> Jacobs Trio and, in and Amsterdam, 1965. Wes was 42 here. Mm -hmm. I, think I, some blues. I think I'll try some blues. This is an F blues. B flat. Seven. drummer came in a little early there, but they're together now. Four chord, one chord. Second chorus. Okay, a couple things. Wes is always comping during his solo. He plays these little chord fragments. Listen. And it makes it so good right here. Love that. Right He's so cool. Now to octaves. So every chorus is a new idea that's developed. He goes with the octaves. Drummer was right with him on that, that accent. So one of the things about Wes's solos, I mentioned this in a video six years ago on my channel when the last time I made a Wes video. Wes's solos typically start out with single notes, then they move to octaves, and then chords. Some of them start out with single notes and go to octaves and not chords, like this one. And some of them will go from octaves to chords, but they always move in that direction. Let me give you an example of one that goes from single notes to octaves to chords. This is a song, Kariba, that's from the Full House record, which came out in 1962. It's a live album that's basically Miles Davis's uh, rhythm section playing with him, although Johnny Griffin's playing tenor sax on this, but this is an uh, unbelievably great take here. That's Johnny Griffin finishing his solo. Single notes for the audience. Next chorus. Space always. Actors. Every chorus. Oh. 
Oh. Listen. Listen to Wes's feel on that lick. Right here. Woo. Just like speaking. Oh. That's just a perfect example of how you develop one idea to the next. Listen. I love that. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. This is why all these great guitarists love Wes Montgomery, because Wes Montgomery was the king of melody playing. He knew how to develop ideas. When you hear George Benson, when you hear Pat Metheny, when you hear Pat Martino, when you hear Eric Johnson, I hear Wes Montgomery and all these guys. These guys that can play idea to idea to idea and develop them beautifully. This is, Wes is the guy. He did it. And it's just... It's mind-boggling how good he was. He was playing all with his thumb, and he just had this incredible sense of how melodies work together, the punctuation, where to leave space. There's never any run-on playing with Wes. For those of you that want to dig into Wes even more, records that you should know, uh, So Much Guitar, which is a 1961 release that Ron Carter actually plays on. That's one of the first records Ron ever did. There is the Boss Guitar, which I mentioned. There's the alternate Wes, the alternative Wes Montgomery that came out in the, um, I want to say the 70s, because I bought it, I think, when I was in high school, and has alternate takes from some of these early records. There's especially a tune called Fried Pies, which is on the Boss Guitar record, but there's an alternate take on the alternative West Montgomery that's absolutely stunning. Smoking at the Half Notes, probably his most famous amongst jazz musicians. If you ask Pat Metheny or George Benson, they would say, oh, Smoking at the Half Note is, is an incredible. Once again, a live record, just like Full House, which I talked about, that Kariba is on, that record you have to know. Then you have the Creed Taylor records, like Down Here in the Ground, Day in the Life, their cover records, uh, Road Song. Uh, they have covers and certain... Uh, Wes originals like Road Song is a Wes tune that was, as far as I'm concerned, is a jazz standard. I played it on a million gigs. People that that like myself played it. It was a really common tune to play. An amazingly cool song. A lot of other guitarists have recorded Road Song, uh, and on that record you have Grady Tate plays drums. Richard Davis, the thing is on bass. Herbie Hancock's on keyboards, and it has an orchestra on it. These uh, these. Records were recorded by Rudy Van Gelder, Creed Taylor was the producer, and Don Sebesky did the arrangements on them. These are really uh, great, great records. But the jazz records, the ones from the early 60s to mid-60s, Wes had a very short career. 
he just got known from about 1960 and passed away in 1968. And in that time, he became a huge star. He was just on the, he was just beginning to become a huge star. So check these records out and you'll find out why all these great musicians, guitar players were influenced by Wes Montgomery. Remember to hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.